Hey guys, how you all doing today? Now for today's video, we got some pretty interesting information about the practical effects for the new film, with Empire Magazine re revealing a brand new image of the Giganotosaurus animatronic as it faces off against our heroes for the film, and with a lot of new information for the film coming out, including some interesting things about some characters, I want to just jump in and discuss it all right now. So, Empire Magazine has gotten a license to reveal some important stuff for the film recently, with their newest thing giving an interview with Colin Javaro, as well of course this image of the Giga, as well as two covers for their future magazines, which will be showcasing both trilogies of characters, one with the Jurassic Park trilogy, and one with the Jurassic World trilogy. And, my god, first let's talk about this Giga, like, it is big, and I mean Big. I don't know about you, but it looks bigger than the Spinosaurus animatronic from the first movie. I don't know if that's actually true, but my god, it is massive. It is a beast, which definitely fits the description of the Giga for sure. And, interestingly enough, while this scene actually is supposed to be nodding to the end of the first trailer, which actually showcased our heroes all meeting up and also coming face to face with the Giganotosaurus before cutting to the end of the trailer, now we finally got a good look at the Giga, at night at least. We've seen the prehistoric one, but this guy looks awesome as well. And he definitely looks like a threat for these characters to face. He's, he's awesome. I wasn't really a big fan of the Giga when I first saw him, but it's grown on me a lot. Like, Giga Nautosaurus has been one of my favorites since I was a kid, and now to finally see a beast version of it, like... The way that it, they've shown it in like promotional images as being massive in comparison to the T-Rex, like it's big, but also it's really bulky, and I really love that. And this animatronic definitely does it justice, and especially the way that I like how it shows the CGI blending in, especially around the legs and the arms, I believe it also shows. But one thing that's really interesting is something that Colin Javaro actually said in his interview, which the first part of this video, don't worry, we won't spoil anything, but his description is really strange, actually, as he describes the Giganotosaurus to be similar to none other than the Joker. That's right, the Clown Prince of Crime is an inspiration to the Giganotosaurus, the villain of this film, which, I gotta say, is really interesting because of the way he describes it, as the Giga is described as not being too pleased with being brought back to the modern world, and, like the Joker, just wants to see the world burn, as it wreaks havoc on all of our main heroes, and it's gonna be awesome. But, we get some interesting things to talk about about this Giga, like, it is, I really love the way that it feels like the classic animatronics from the first movies, like, one of the big issues I've had with the Jurassic World trilogy, especially, like, Jurassic World having no practical effects except for the Apatosaurus, is that all the practical effects have felt really in cage, like, Fallen Kingdoms had a lot, but they were always like in cages or trailers and stuff. This one feels very classic Jurassic Park, where they were like actually out in the open, actually attacking people. Like the way that in Jurassic Park and, and the Lost World, you could see like the practical effect attack someone, and then it would change to CGI for the more dangerous stuff. I really loved that and it's awesome to see with this guy. I really love that, especially because it's not a small practical effect, it's a big one. And we also get a lot more images of other dinosaurs as well, including the Pyroraptors, the Stiggy Moloch, Microceratus, which we've actually discussed in the past, the Dilophosaurus, the Lystrosaurus, and even the Dimorphodons, which, strangely enough, don't have their fur that they have on their backs in the Jurassic World films, which I think that might be a change, unfortunately, which maybe it'll be retconned that this is a different version, or maybe it's the same version and they're just going to completely ignore that fact. I don't know. But still looks awesome, and also, gotta say, these practical effects look awesome, and especially because of all these ones, the only one that's actually in a cage is actually the Stiggy Moloch, which I'm pretty sure, like the Nasutoceratops and Lystrosaurus, they'll be able to come out as well, so it's not just focused in there. And the interesting thing is, we don't even see all of the new dinosaurs for these practical effects. We don't see the Atrociraptors, which we've technically seen their um, heads that they've actually been carried around by crew members, but we haven't seen a full animatronic of those yet. Can't wait to see those. Anyway, also, 
moving on to other things, these images for the um, main cast, they are really interesting because they definitely give off, again, a Lost World feel, which this film is really going for that feel. Like the Therizinosaurus sequence that we saw in the trailer, it screams the Lost World, especially the way the foliage looks and the way the Therizinosaurus is so aggressive to all the characters like it's not a quiet herbivore it's one that's going on the attack which we haven't seen since the lost world actually with the stegosaurus and triceratops in that movie so awesome to see that but again we see the characters in a lost world environment too which pretty sure is supposed to represent the biosyn facility which we'll discuss later on in the video but i like the way that it shows the difference between both sets of trios of characters with Grant's team and the Jurassic Park era having this more rugged and paleontological look to it, more on the ground, dirty feel. Whereas Owen Grady, Kayla, Mama Duathy's character, and Bryce Dallas Howard, they all have this um, more adventurous and cleaner look to them. And it really fits, and especially because we have not seen these guys interact with each other, so it's going to be interesting to see like characters like Ian Malcolm and Claire Deering discuss their values on like the dinosaurs' work. It's going to be so strange, and got to say, once again, so happy to see Ellie Sattler back as like a major character, and not just like a character who's written just to have one goal in the movie, which is to rescue them from the island. She's back as a badass, and she's not just here for one quick scene. That's awesome to see. We also get some better looks at more practical effects in this, these images as well, but I really do love these images. But moving on to another thing that has come up, which is actually a sort of size chart image that actually showcases a lot of the dinosaurs in this movie, including some of the old ones and new ones, but not all of them, which is described as the Biosyn Sanctuary, which I don't know what this is supposed to be. Maybe it's supposed to be the facility that we saw in the trailer. I don't know yet, but interestingly enough, it doesn't show all of the new dinosaurs. Like, it doesn't show the uh, Trosraptors, the Morris Intrepidus, Oviraptor. It shows a lot of them, a mix of them. Maybe these are the ones that are specifically going to be at the Biosyn facility that we saw in the trailer. I don't know yet, but one thing I really love is the way it shows their sheer size, especially the way the Dreadnoughtus is massive in comparison to both Apatosaurus and Brachiosaurus. And if you look at the Therizinosaurus, it's actually taller than both Giga and T-Rex, which that is an awesome thing to see. It's definitely going to be a tough dinosaur, that's for sure. And it's awesome to see, like, we're definitely seeing a huge variety in dinosaurs and stuff. I don't know what this is going to be for the film. Also, we see some baby versions of dinosaurs, like we see the Nasutoceratops, we see a baby Baryonyx, baby Carnotaurus. It's really interesting how much variety we're getting in this. And now we're going to get on to spoilers for the film, so if you want to click off for this last little bit, do go ahead, because I don't want you to be spoiled, but the next little part sort of spoils some stuff for Biosyn, so here we go. In the interview for Empire Magazine with Colin Trevorrow, they described the Biosyn facility as well as the Giga in Further Deep, which states the following. The Giga's home is the Amber Rich Biosyn facility, a name that'll be familiar with fans from the original Jurassic Park. Biosyn was the rival company to InGen that pa who paid Dennis Nedry to steal those fateful embryos back in the day. Biosyn got the contract to house dinosaurs that have been captured around the world via various governments, Trevorrow teases to the Dominion's plot. They claim it's a research facility where they can study pharmaceutical values of the animals, but there's some other stuff going on. And among their fold is a series newcomer, Mamadou Athi, playing Biosyn employee Ramsey Cole, a very ambitious and forward-thinking young man, the actor teases. Which, there you go, guys. So, Mamadou Athi's character is named Ramsey Cole, which basically cancels all of our theories of him being Darius's brother, but interestingly enough, makes him working for the villain team, even though he is showing up with Kayla, Dewan Dewat's character, and also Chris Pratt's Owen Grady and Claire Deering in these posters. Maybe he will have a turnaround to be good. I don't know. I still think Kayla's definitely going to be a good guy because, like, she's been with the main character throughout all of her promotions so far. So she's definitely on the good side for now. Maybe she'll be revealed as a bad guy as well. I know there's the theories of her working for Manticore, but 
Who knows yet? But it's interesting that Mamadou Athi is playing a Biosyn employee, and the way they the way they describe him is as an ambitious and forward-thinking young man, which reminds me of Howard King a lot, actually, the way they described him in the book, actually. But, interestingly enough, it finally explains how Biosyn was actually getting the DNA for all of their new dinosaurs, and also explains the poster, actually, on why there's so many engine variants. It seems that the government has actually been tricked by Biosyn into letting them collect dinosaurs from all over the world, which actually does explain the opening for the prologue, actually, which showcased Rexy being hunted down by a helicopter, which it could be explained in the movie, which we'll probably see, Rexy has actually been kidnapped by Biosyn, which is going to be really interesting. I am a little worried about that being the case, because then that means that we probably won't get too much of Rexy in the film. I really hope that's not the case. But... That is it, guys. That is all the information recently come out. I gotta say, it's some interesting information. I was not expecting all of this. And with Dominion just two months away, I cannot be more ready for this film to come out. I, I'm dying, guys, inside. Every day we get closer, it's a breath of fresh air that I just take off my chest. I cannot wait for this film to come out. But anyway, guys, what do you think about all this information? What do you think about the news of Mamadou Athi's character being a Biosyn operative? What do you think about this Giganotosaurus animatronic? Do you love it as I do? Or do you think it could have been even better? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear them all in the comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, guys, I would appreciate the like. And if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button to join the hunt. Be safe, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.